Hello, I'm Conkling. Good of you to come. I trust you're finding the accommodation satisfactory? Sorry to seem mysterious. You must understand someone in my position, an investor in this ship, needs discretion. You're under no obligation, of course. I have a slight problem. You may be able to help. A servant has stolen an important business document from me, and I must recover it. A few years ago, my wife Beatrix hired a young Irish girl as maid in our London house. We treated her well. Two weeks ago, she up and left without notice, taking a certain letter with her. I'd given up all hope of recovering it, until my wife spotted her this morning on the third-class promenade. Needless to say, I checked with the purser. She'd been scheduled to sail on the Philadelphia. But those passengers were transferred on board the Titanic because of a coal strike. Government officials, friends of mine, told me a bureau agent was on board. I found you through Mrs. Cashmore, a preposterous woman. But she does have an eye for accomplishment. Look, will you help me? You will be rewarded handsomely. Her name is Shayla Hacker. She's 20 or thereabouts. I was her benefactor, one might say. Um, yes. This puts me in a, um, difficult situation. This young woman, she could cause considerable damage to me, to my reputation if she goes to the newspapers. Confidential business matters. Conkling Steel provides steel for ships. This ship, for example. If the contents of the letter were publicized, our competitors would profit greatly. I've gotten word to her to meet on the poop deck. Go in my place. Tell her there'll be no trouble if she returns the letter. Afterwards, report to me in our suite, B-59. Her name is Shayla Hacker. Good night. What did I tell you, Shay? I knew he'd not come in person. Hush, Jack, hush. Conklin, he did send you, didn't he? I told you, it's a trick. I knew Conklin wouldn't come. He sent one of his cronies instead. I'm her brother, and Conklin, because of him, Shayla's had to leave everything and everyone she knows. Jack, don't. That son of a bitch. She was his maid and all the time violating it. Hush, Jack. I'll have no more of it. Go on, Jack, say it. You tell Conklin we have his letter, and he'll not be seeing it till he coughs up a tidy sum, too. Five thousand, do you hear? Dollars. Enough to get her started right in America. And if he moves a hand against us, I'll make sure the newspapers get the letter and print it. So tell Conklin. Five thousand. Measured against what he has, it's a bloody bargain. Meet us here again, at one, tonight. Five thousand dollars, then he'll get his damn letter, agreed? We'll be waiting for you. Please, I must apologize. Charles, you see how it is. We quarreled again. I left for a walk. The smoking room, probably. Or looking for my necklace, if you can see straight. They stole something valuable. What, I don't know. Sasha's to sell it secretly in America. I told him it was immoral. He laughed, telling me I, who married for position, shouldn't quibble about morality. Said if I told anybody, he'd publicize our affair and ruin me. So I said nothing. Though I'm afraid they'll do something horrible with all that money. Take good care of my necklace. Return it to me in New York. We'll be there soon enough. There, together. Good night. Come in. I'd hoped to meet you earlier, however, my wife and I were calling on the Astors. Madeline's pregnant. 
Beatrix was thrilled. We have no children. I see, it's a ransom. May I present Mrs. Conkling? You should pitch the ungrateful girl overboard. Your clothes, French cut, quite fetching. I forgot to tell you when we first met. Beatrix is on her way to California. She's got a new project in, where is it, dear? A cow town, someplace called Los Angeles. I'm doing up a little resort there. It's called the Beverly Hills Hotel. So where is the Irish tart? Dreaming of her newfound riches? We were just talking about that, darling. My husband and myself extended every courtesy, showed every kindness to Shayla. We've no children. Shayla became quite dear to us. So her theft hurt us all the more for the trust we placed in her. Don't fail us. Now, excuse me, I must retire. I have a frightful headache. It was a pleasure. Good night, Andrew. My wife felt strongly about Shayla. As I've told you, we need no children of our own. Look, you must get that letter. Don't wait until tomorrow. See if you can speak to Shayla directly, without her brother. She's in the third class cabins forward, on F deck, number 59. Good night. I'll speak to you tomorrow. Jack, is that you? I'll be right out. I don't want to wake the baby. Oh, but we were meeting later. Where's Jack? Please, I don't want no trouble. I didn't know the letter was so dear. I just wanted to take something, anything that looked valuable. For the baby, it was Jack who read it. Saw it was bad for Mr. Conkling. He said the bit about selling bad steel would ruin him if it was to get out in the papers. My baby, Eddie. He's the only reason I stood them last month at the Conklings. I knew Mr. Conkling weren't going to leave his missus. I was only a parlor maid, but I didn't care. I was happy to have his baby. Him and Mrs. Conklin, I thought they was so kind, until I found out that Mrs. Conklin, Mrs. Conklin was going to steal my baby for her own. Once I had it, she would fire me and take Eddie for herself. She can't have her own babies. So she, so they, they used me to get one, to get Eddie. When I found out that was her plan, I left. I didn't know the letter was anything. I thought it might hold a pound or two. Anyway, Jack, he says Mr. Conklin got the letter from an engineer up at the mill. Said the mill's been making bad steel. High and sulfur is what he called it. The steel's no good, and they put it in the Titanic. It'd be a scandal if it got out. That's why Mr. Conklin wants the letter back. But Jack, he says Conklin'll have to pay us to get it. Five thousand dollars. Ha, Mrs. Conklin's probably behind it. All she cares about is a fine name and pots of cash. And a baby. But she won't get Eddie. No, she won't. And if she tries, I'll ruin her. Make her poor as me. <laughs> oh, that's Eddie. Bye. Don't forget about our meeting. Hello. You may have heard I am in financial straits. I've borrowed money from Andrew Conkling, money that he is now demanding I pay back. I've none to give. Poverty should remain the domain of the virtuous. I've no taste for it. Georgia, afraid of me? <laughs> well, that would be a reaction at least. We no longer evoke emotion in each other. We're a husband and wife in name only. <laughs> I have to tell you. <laughs> No, I shall fix things first, and without Georgia. Another drink, uh, another whiskey for, um, I hope you don't mind if I do. Now, you, uh, want to know some secrets. Uh, thank you, bartender. I'll tell you one. Georgia's diamond necklace. It's a fake. 
the one on her neck, leastways. I gave the real necklace to Sasha. It's in his cabin for safekeeping. When he gets to New York, he'll sell it, quickly and quietly, for 20% commission. I'll pay off my debts to Conkling, put Georgia away, sail back to England free and clear. She's unstable, as you know, so I'm placing her in a sanatorium. An easy thing to do, given her emotional history. The law favors the husband in these matters. She can do nothing about it. God forbid the suffragettes really do win women the vote. They'll never know their place again. Because I threatened to tell Scotland Yard about his Serbian aid society, and because Sasha's a greedy bastard, he'd betray his love for 20%. And Georgia thinks she's outsmarted me.